Those are criminal leaks. The leaks are absolutely real. The, the news is fake. Fake media. The failing New York Times. Fake news. Very I'm, fake news. I yeah. should be ashamed of themselves. Impartial, free and fair. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, Mr. President. Just like CNN. Watch how friendly he is. Go ahead. Not a simple question. Not a fair question. Okay, sit down. I, I understand the rest of your question. The tone is such hatred. Poison. That's what it is. It's a verbal form of poison meant to affect your view of the media world, meant to harm news organizations. Notice what Trump was doing with this tweet, this now famous tweet from Friday. You saw it. It says the fake news media, failing New York Times, NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, is not my enemy. It is the enemy of the American people. He was singling out specific news outlets as enemies, including this one. He wasn't talking about the entire press. He was talking about those five. And he wasn't saying that they're his enemy, but your enemy. Maybe trying to drive another wedge between the sources he likes and the sources he dislikes. Maybe he was also trying to just distract us, right? Let's see, what else happened that hour, the 4 p.m. hour on Friday? Let's go ahead and pull it up in the control room. This is from CNN at 4.01 p.m. And this is exclusive video of the FBI Director James Comey leaving a classified briefing on Capitol Hill with members of the Senate Intelligence Committee and a handful of other senators. And we are told that meeting was, listen to this, about Russia. What was said in that meeting remains a mystery two days later, but reporters are trying to figure it out. Some folks in the media say Trump's huffing and puffing about the press is just a petty distraction, that we should focus more on covering his actions, what he does, and not what he says. And it's true that his actions are the most important thing. But some of his actions are about the media. Appointing aides who condemn the press, holding news conferences to complain about the coverage for an hour and 15 minutes, and carefully composing tweets in response to what he sees on TV. Those are his actions. These actions and these words matter. His words inspire many people, but they instill fear in many others. His words are what won him the election. Words like crooked and build a wall. Now his words like fake news are part of a never-ending campaign. I would describe those words as poison. So we're going to take his words and actions seriously here and discuss the consequences. Uh, you know, looking back at history, recent history, there's only one president uh, who so vehemently called the press an enemy. Uh, it happened in secret. A number of veteran journalists have told me they see parallels to Richard Nixon right now. So we have an all-star panel here to help break this down. We're going to bring in all these voices in just a few minutes. But when it comes to comparisons to Nixon, there's one expert I must start with right there in the top, Carl Bernstein, CNN political analyst, uh, one half of the famed Woodward and Bernstein team that broke Watergate wide open. Carl, uh, Nixonian, is that appropriate? Is it a fair comparison to make 30 days into Trump's presidency? Trump's attacks on the American press as enemies of the American people are more treacherous than Richard Nixon's attacks on the press. Nixon's attacks on the press were largely in private. Uh, there's a history of what enemy of the people that phrase means as used by dictators and authoritarians, including Stalin, including Hitler. And I'm not about to say uh, anything about comparing uh, Hitler and Trump, uh, but it's a demagogue's statement. And we live in a time now when there is no civic consensus in this country, like there was at the time of Watergate, about acceptable presidential conduct. There was a consensus mm -hmm. that Nixon had to leave office office because he had breached that acceptable conduct. We have no such acceptable compact among Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals in this country today. So Trump is out there on his own leading a demagogic attack on the institutions of free democracy, including the press. Do you have the sense that it's working? Uh, because one reaction would be, these are just words. These are just words. He's not taking actions. He's not uh, threatening news outlets, trying to shut places down, filing lawsuits and things like that. Do, does it working that his anti-press attacks are actually having an impact? I think it's working in the sense of playing to his base and further dividing the country. Is it working in terms of also scaring the hell out of a lot of Republicans? 
uh, on Capitol Hill who think that he is out off on a ride that is dangerous to American democracy? Uh, and are they quaking, uh, many of them, uh, without speaking out? Yes. Uh, we are into terrible authoritarian tendencies that we are seeing in the new president of the United States. We've never seen in an American president such open authoritarian uh, moves and rhetoric. Uh, this is a terrible time we're living in. And the press, look, when the press was reporting on Hillary Clinton's server, and the Clinton Foundation, the same people who he's now calling enemies of the American people. Donald Trump thought we were patriots. Uh, so the hypocrisy of this, aside from the lies that underlie the president's words, we are doing our job. That is what we're there to do. Uh, we need to find out all of what this president is doing, what his administration is doing, nothing more, nothing less. And that's what we're doing. We are not enemies of the American people. In fact, we're the last resort of the American people to a dictatorial uh, and authoritarian inclined president. Strong language from you, Carl. Let me bring in some other voices to see their perspective on this. Selena Zito, a columnist for The Washington Examiner and a CNN contributor, and political analyst Jeff Greenfield, uh, both joining me now. Jeff, your impression here, uh, Carl is using words like authoritarian. Would you agree uh, with that characterization? Well, that's, that's certainly the whisper of it. When you use a term like enemy of the people, uh, a lot of people have pointed to totalitarian regimes that use that phrase, uh, whether it was Stalin or whether it was Hitler, and I'm certainly not going there at this point. I would point out where I think uh, we have to keep a sharp eye is whether we go beyond words. Remember, Richard Nixon first sent out Vice President Agnew to attack the media as an unelected elite based on their coverage of the Vietnam War. And more seriously, there were plans in the second term to use the government's power to do things like take television stations away from companies that own newspapers and challenge licenses. So what I think would be useful, rather than just focusing on the words, is to see whether or not this takes the form of action in which the power of the government whether it's antitrust, tax laws, uh, whatever, whether that's used. I mean, CNN is part of Time Warner, which is engaged in a huge merger effort with AT&T. Does the government oppose that on what might ostensibly be sound antitrust grounds, but are really doing it to punish Time Warner and CNN? That's the sort of thing I would like to keep an eye on. Past mergers like the AT&T Time Warner deal have received government approval. Trump, before election day, uh, before he won the election, uh, said he would block. He vowed to block that merger. Uh, at the moment, it is working its way through the regulatory process. These companies hope it'll uh, clear by the end of the year. But what you're asking, Jeff, it's a giant question mark about what this administration will do with regards to the merger. It, it strikes me as something I've, I've been saying privately, and I, I haven't said it on television. I think I probably should which is that as journalists, I think we need to think about how bad it could get for the news media, meaning we shouldn't have a failure of imagination here. Uh, I hope that this administration does not go down the road of blocking uh, licenses or uh, auditing journalists and things like that. But we need to know what's possible and imagine what's possible uh, and prepare for it. And certainly media lawyers are doing that. Selena, let me bring into this conversation. Uh, you, you were writing on Friday about Trump's enemies tweet. Uh, I, I want to make sure we're not going overboard, overreacting to, to what the president's posting on Twitter. So how did you interpret it? Well, I, I think we have two things going on. Uh, to Carl's point about is it penetrating into the American public, I can remember in Ambridge, in my own backyard in, in Pennsylvania, covering uh, a Trump event. And I was on the phone with my editor, and a woman, elderly woman, she, was, she later told me she was 74, said, do you work for CNN? And I said, no, at the time I didn't. And she said, oh, well, that's good, because if you did, I would spit on you. I was like, what? You know, so that that is penetrating into the American public because she believed that we were unfair and that we were deliberately trying to hurt her candidate. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, Trump, I, I believe that Trump need, believes he needs someone, a straw man, someone to blame because there's not a Hillary Clinton out there. An and opponent. we make them most easiest foil for that and and our problem tends to be is that 
people believe we spend too much time focusing on what he talks, what he says about us, and they would like to see us spend more time on what he's doing. Does that make sense? It, it does. I, I would argue that some of his actions, what he's doing, is attacking the media. Well, that's true. It's more than it's attacking. A, Go ahead, I, and then I'll bring my point. Well, I mean, it, 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 we're caught in a really bad position as, as, as in the way that I see it. We are not the enemies. We work very hard to bring the truth to the people. The people need a free press. It's a vibrant part of a democracy. Carl? Look, Trump is an enemy of the truth. That is what we know from his presidency thus far. He's not interested in the truth. He's not interested in the best obtainable version of the truth, which is what real journalism and reporting is. He's not interested in a fact-based debate. And what we are seeing already are actions at intimidating the press, which means the people lose, and intimidating those in the American government who talk to the press. We already, as in the Nixon years, are watching Trump initiate a leak investigation of draconian threats that's already underway. That is the threat to the American people. We don't need the press to be self-centered about attacks on us. Yeah. We need to be, all of us, focused on attacks on the First Amendment, on the Constitution, the free press and how it reaches the people, especially when we have an authoritarian president who seems not to understand the Constitution. Nixon understood the Constitution. This to tell president you what, uh, does not. Carl, you set up my tease perfectly. We're going to talk leaks.